Welcome to Kinky Knots Cafe, Proactive is the Way, where we provide you tools and resources to enhance your mind, body, and spirit. Get ready, folks. Let us nurture you from the inside out. Hello there, my friends. Today, we are officially kicking off the last series of season two on Proactive is the Way. Focus, finish, fantastique. A few weeks ago, we finally moved back home. If you recall, about a year and a half ago, we experienced a fire in our childhood home and had to move into temporary housing. The fire occurred in January of 2023, and a few months before, we had just started our first podcasting season. I thought during that time that I was going to have to postpone our show. But after shifting the program and revamping the structure, we were able to keep things moving without a break. And honestly, The situation could not have worked out so perfectly to actually accomplish finishing the first season and designing a much more manageable structure of our show for the season to come. So while we were in this new neighborhood, a completely new and different environment. I didn't know what to expect and even considered postponing the launch of season two. Once again, I was able to muster up enough energy and dedicated enough time to create a program for season two and even implemented guests, which, by the way, happened by accident. I was hoping to just get one or two guests and ended up with an entire season being able to interview some amazing people and get fresh new perspectives to debunk or substantiate the concepts discussed, bringing more color and light to the topics being presented. No matter what happens in this life, the good, the bad, the indifference, it will all work out for your good. So if any of you are wondering how I have been so successful at making happen, it is partially due to the series in which I am launching today. Are you tired of letting people interfere in your life? taking you off course with the endeavors that you want to accomplish? Or do you have a habit of procrastinating and being unfocused and never finishing? In this series, we provide you practical tactics to grow your willpower, stop procrastination, focus like a laser, and achieve whatever you set your mind to following through, and finishing what you start so that you can create the life you want without having to compromise or wait. To help us improve in this area, we have been reading a book by Peter Hollins titled Finish What You Start and our supplemental book, How to Finish Everything You Start by Janelle Yeager. Today, I will provide you an overview of Finish What You Start by Peter Hollins. So, do you ever start a book and skip the introduction or preface? If you do, don't. I really like reading the introductions within books. It's where you really get to know the author. And what I love is understanding the rationale for why one chose to focus on a particular topic and how did they become so knowledgeable, especially when they write about a topic in which they may not be academically or professionally qualified or 
they choose not to include any works cited. It helps you to understand how to digest their books and seek for further resources to substantiate their claims. In this book, Peter shares that when he writes, it is primarily for himself. And while he has dedicated a number of years in this space and has a BS and a graduate degree in psychology, one must practice prudence. And if works are not cited, take what is shared as one's perspective and understand that further research may be needed to validate their claims. All right, let's get into it. Peter breaks this book up over eight chapters and does an amazing job of summarizing and providing a summary guide to hone in on the key takeaways from the readings. He starts off in chapter one with the concept of following through about the inhibitions we employ that cause us to not be able to execute and follow through until we finish. So what does it mean to follow through? Peter states that following through and finishing requires one to possess focus, self-discipline, action, and persistence. And without these foundational traits, one will struggle to not only follow through, but also finish. While one may possess these traits, it's also important to realize that we may employ inhibiting tactics such as procrastination, We may permit distractions or set bad goals. Who remembers this convo in which we had with Tara Stubbins from the Take It Easy group when we talked about the importance of setting realistic goals as she outlined leveraging the SMART strategy to assist in accomplishing our goals, making sure that our goals are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. If you missed it, go back and check out Season 2, Episode 4, Own Your Story with Tara Stubbins. In addition to inhibiting tactics, Peter also shares that we may employ psychological roadblocks such as fear or perfectionism. If you haven't noticed, a great deal of why we don't follow through is due to the devices in which we create or permit within our lives. And once we understand that we are holding ourselves back and how we are doing so, we can start to remove the obstacles and realize our potential. In chapter two, Peter dives into the external and internal motivators and provides a guide into how to identify the two. He helps us to understand how to leverage this knowledge to keep us focused and moving forward. He also highlights the opportunity costs should we fail to execute. In chapters three and four, rules, standards, and principles come into play. We learn about the need to set standards or rules to help us in developing the right mindset and model for executing and completing. Folks, this is what our entire season has been all about. Setting principles or standards to help us take initiative and accomplish our goals. I hope that you are taking note and developing your own playbook. Because as we know, setting standards and developing the right mindset are critical factors to help us find success within the endeavors that we pursue. This year, we learned in principles by Ray Dalio that if we want to get the most out of life, we must be able to set and follow his top five rules or standards. Do you recall the rules within his playbook? Number one, have clear goals. Two, Identify and don't tolerate the problems that stand in the way of you achieving your goals. Three, accurately diagnose the problems to get at their root cause. Four, design plans that will get you around them. Five, 
Do what's necessary to push your goals through to results. Of course, Peter highlighted his own. And the one that really captured my attention was one rule he developed to resist giving into an urge or a temptation. It's called the 10, 10, 10 rule. (laughs) Now, I probably should have made better note of this rule last night when I helped my son by taking a bite of his chicken burrito from Chipotle. (laughs) Oh my God, it was so good. And I did not take heed, didn't pause at all. And if you don't mind, let me do a sidebar because I need to understand why do kids do this? Why do they leave food just lying around? It's such a setup. They're always setting me up knowing that I am a human garbage disposal. I guess they prefer me fluffy like so many others. Anyways, he shared that the next time you feel that you are about to give in to an urge or temptation, stop and ask yourself how you will feel 10 minutes, 10 hours, and 10 days from now. He stated that he employed this rule because it forces us to think about our future self and to see how our actions are going to affect ourself in the future for better or worse. A lot of times we may know that we are losing willpower or doing something harmful in the moment, but that's not enough to stop us from doing it because we don't have any connection to our future self that will have to deal with the consequences. That is so interesting. So by having this rule, the 10, 10, 10 rule, it quickly creates that connection and makes the difference between a success or failure of discipline. In chapter five, he walks us through how to smash procrastination and in chapter six, minimize distractions. I must say in chapter six, this man spoke to my heart as he expressed the same exact sentiments in which I have as it relates to multitasking. It's a crock. It doesn't work. It's ineffective. You don't want to miss this part as he shares that by multitasking, we are neither able to adequately focus on each new task, nor able to ignore any distractions that are hindering our work. And when we switch tasks, it takes a long while for our attention to catch up and actually work for us again. There might be certain ways we can multitask 1% more effectively. But the overall lesson is just to avoid it whenever possible. So I spoke about this in depth with Tiffany in season one, episode three, the mind loaded and ready when we focused on the book Atomic Habits and how to develop good habits. Check it out if you missed it. I shared a story about Miss Linda, a Jewish woman. She taught me so much. I call her my guiding light. She had shared with me, Toya, you are most effective when you treat a project as Tupperware. Essentially, place each project in a Tupperware bowl. Open one of the lids and keep the others closed. Focus, dive in, and get as much done as you can on that project. Close the lid, then open another. She taught me how to have a more strategic and manageable strategy or approach to multitasking. And may I add, it has been the most effective for me. I never knew how to define it. I called it multi-project tasking because I still manage several projects at a time, but I managed my time more effectively by focusing on one project at a time reaching a certain point, or setting a deadline to complete one aspect of that project before I close the lid on it, 
and focused on another project. Thank you, Peter, for defining this a little simpler. He calls it single tasking. I don't know why I didn't think of that. (laughs) Anyways, as Peter shares that when you single task, you set everything else aside and don't check social media, monitor email, or even touch anything other than the current task you are working on. It requires singular focus and the purposeful and intentional tuning out of everything else. A lot of single tasking is about consciously avoiding distractions that seem small and harmless. As we wrap up this book, in chapter 7, Peter discusses pitfalls that we may encounter, such as worrying or overthinking. And in chapter 8, building the right systems to implement to ensure that we are setting ourselves up for success. Designing effective systems was also discussed in our first season, episodes three and four, when we discussed the book Atomic Habits. Overall, folks, this was a very good book and a super easy read. It is sold as an audio and book, but not together. (laughs) And now I know why. You will get more information out of reading the book as the audio was heavily edited. Nonetheless, you can't go wrong with either because the crux of the content was highlighted in both. I am still listening to Jan's book and so far I do like her book as well. She does a lot of self-reflection and exercises in her book. We'll share some highlights of her book in our next episode as we highlight the results of the exercises we completed. All right, folks, that's a wrap. Join us in two weeks as Terry Tucker, a motivational speaker, author, and international podcast guest on the topics of motivation, mindset, and self-development graces us with his presence. Terry is the author of the book, Sustainable Excellence, 10 Principles to Leading Your Uncommon and Extraordinary Life. He has been featured in Authority, Thrive Global, and Human Capital Leadership magazines, along with being quoted and featured in the new book, Audaciousness, Your Journey to Living a Bold and Authentic Life by Mary Bell Ortega and Helen Strong. Terry will join us in our final episode on Proactive is the Way. Focus. Finish. Fantastic. To access all replays or learn more about Kinky Knots Cafe's Pro Active is the Way, please visit www.kinkynotscafe.com. Proactive is the Way, my friends. Take good care.